So, you know, we're going to get on the topic here of uh, some of the mental issues that have obviously uh, driven uh, some of these uh, tragic deaths this summer with uh, some of the hockey players in the National Hockey League. Uh, you know, obviously Derek Bugard and uh, Wade Belak and Rick Rippon were three guys that were obviously suffering uh, some depression and anxiety issues and my heart absolutely goes out to not only uh, the deceased but the families as well and uh, I, I, I can relate with these guys uh, on a level where not only did I go through it uh, myself, you know, I wasn't at that level but I think what kind of sometimes even held me from getting to that next level was it's a very, very competitive market these days. Uh, there's a lot at stake. Um, I have the utmost respect for these players that are not only putting uh, they're putting their ass on the line every single night that they go out. I mean, it, it's, it's absolute war out there. And, you know, these guys that have been afflicted with such misfortunes on a mental issue, um, you know, these guys are, are, they know that every night they're having to go and put their butt on the line and they're having to fight uh, the toughest guy on each team. So you have to expect that, you know, you know, gearing up as far as, you know, uh, mentally for some of these battles are going to be quite hard on the human mind. Um, so like, how are we going to deal with those issues? How, how, how are we going to, you know, address the issues of, say, depression, uh, bipolar, uh, how it's going to affect some of these guys that are uh, playing it in the National Hockey League level in all the sports. Um, you know, I think uh, you know having some psychiatric exams. Obviously, the NHL is going to be looking into all this now after all these tragedies that happened this past summer, uh, which is which is going to be great. Uh, another issue I want to address is as far as uh, as the headshots out there. You know, we got Sidney Crosby, the best player in the game right now. Uh, not only is he the best player in my mind. He's also the most focused and the most driven. Such a talented person on and off the ice, and it's uh, it's unfortunately that it's unfortunate that you know we're being deprived of watching uh, such a skilled hockey player not perform uh, the talents that he's been uh, God blessed to give us uh, in, in society. Uh, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with some of the pads these guys are wearing. You know, Don Cherry uh, addressed this issue on Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, these guys are like warriors out there. They're using, you know, Kevlar pads. I mean, that, that, you take one of those to the chin or to the head, uh, and at the high velocity of speed that these guys are going right now, I mean, that's it's like getting hit by a car. These guys aren't going slow out there. Uh, the pads need to be modified. Um, you know, that's something that I think is, is, is very important to address. I know back when I was playing, uh, this is going back to the 1997 season, this is going back to as far as like uh, mental issues and depression. Um, I, 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 like I said, I wasn't at the NHL level, but I was at a level where, you know, I, I was getting paid to play hockey. All the guys were getting paid. Our jobs were on the line every night. We didn't know where we were going to be from one season to the next, sometimes from one day to the next, depending on how talented a hockey player you were. And I was living with, uh, with the tough guy on my team who was a very gentle soul off the ice but he made his living with his fists on the ice and you know he was a very very depressed guy at a lot of times uh, because he was you know he was playing with broken hands and you know he would he would come to me and in tears sometimes like you know he'd say Ryan I'd say I can't just I'm emotionally drained and have, knowing I'm having to go out there every night and you know put my bag on the line put my heart and soul on the line, knowing that you're going to have to go against this top fighter on the team with your blood, sweat, and tears. And it's, I realize, it's a competitive market, there's a lot of money, it's such a big business, and we as uh, public and society, you know, we're paying for that. Do I think fighting should be taken out of the game? No, I, I don't think it should be taken out of the game, but as far as, you know, the mental side of uh, where these players' heads are at, that's what needs to be addressed on a much bigger issue. Uh, the guy that I lived with, I'm not going to name his name, he tried committing suicide. He slashed his wrist, uh, God, I think it was 11 times, over 11 times. He slashed his wrist, there was blood all over the wall. And I found the guy, uh, you know, three blocks down the road, uh, uh, hiding behind a churchyard, uh, a churchyard uh, ventilator. Uh, did he get help? No, he didn't get help. Our coach, he wanted him back on the ice, you know, a few days later. 
They took him to the hospital. They didn't do a psychiatric exam on him. They bandaged him up. Uh, within a week, the guy was playing again. So, I mean, these guys are people. They're, they're people just like you and I. You know, um, they work very hard to get to where they have gone, obviously. But uh, what I'm trying to say to you guys here is that when we're watching these people, these beautiful people that have been given these God-given talents, we have to look at it at, at a much more deep, deeper level, okay? Uh, the game of hockey is amazing. It's, I think, one of the coolest sports in the world. I love it. And I, I, I want to see the game go in such a, uh, just keep going in a more positive level. Uh, see the skill le level keep rising. And, and I want to see those good players show the skill that we deserve to see and they deserve to actually perform on the ice. Anyways, that's my two cents for today, guys. Uh,